the two ways that we can enter our machine code program is we could either manually enter poke commands into the basic program either so that's one way we could do it is by manually entering poke commands to manually enter each code into memory locations one by one as we into man to manually enter poke to manually enter to manually enter the codes for each to manually enter the codes for Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to do something really cool, I think, which is we are going to be creating our first machine code program. Now I say machine code program, and I mean machine code program. I don't mean Z80 assembly language program. And some of you might be perhaps confused as to the difference between Z80 assembly language and Z80 machine code. The difference is quite easy to understand machine code is the numbers that the computer uses to execute a program. So all programs that are run by a computer need to be broken down or converted into numbers that the machine understands in order to run them. That's what the computer understands and that's what the computer will execute. Now, if you're entering a program in Z80 assembly language, it gets converted into machine code as we're going to see when we actually start using our Z80 assembler program. And uh, when we do that, we're going to be entering programs using Z80 mnemonics that we mentioned in a previous video, which are basically just sort of pseudo-English words that represent machine code instructions, which makes it easier for humans to understand and to read and to remember. But the computer doesn't understand Z80 assembly language. It only understands machine code. So a Z80 assembly language program needs to first be converted or assembled into machine code before the computer can run it. But I thought it would be kind of interesting and cool to first off create a program using pure machine code. So in order to create a program in machine code, what we're going to do is we're going to have to know the codes for each of the commands that we're entering. And that's how they used to do it uh, back, you know, in the early days of programming, they, before they had assembler programs to help them, they would have to look up the codes and find out what machine code numbers to enter into their program. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to start from the ground up like we do with everything else on this channel. We're going to take it slowly one step at a time to make sure we get a good foundation and really understand what we're doing because I'm learning along with you guys. So I want to learn in a way that's going to help me to remember everything that I'm doing. And for me, that means starting slowly step by step. So we're going to start by entering a machine code program without using assembly language, which means we're going to have to manually look up the codes for each command that we enter into our program, which is fine. We can do that. And especially at this stage, we're going to be making very short, simple programs, right? So it's not going to be too much of a challenge for us. But the question becomes, how do we actually get this machine code program into the computer? If we were using uh, basic, for example, we could just turn on the computer or the emulator and start typing away in basic and we could create a basic program and it's already in the computer. All we have to do is save it. If we're using a Z80 assembler to create an assembly language program, then similarly, we would just type in an assembly language program and save that program or save the code that that program generates and we're good to go, right? But how do we get a pure machine code program into our computer? We need to find a way to enter those numbers, those codes into the computer memory. There are two ways to do that that I'm aware of. You can do it either by using a basic program or you can do it by manually entering them uh, one by one using poke commands, either on a real computer or in an emulator, which I'll be using. But if you have a real hardware that you want to, to use to do this as well, you could do that. The poke command in basic is a command that lets you write a value directly into a memory location. And we covered memory and memory locations and memory addressing and data bits and address buses in a previous video as well. So if this is confusing to you, feel free to go back and, and check out that video. But uh, an easier way for us to do that is to create a short basic program that will enter the codes for us. And this is going to be a very simple basic program. If you're familiar with basic, this won't be much of a challenge. Really, all we have to do is 
get the values stored into memory location somehow. So uh, we can create a short basic program to allow us to do that. And uh, that will be our loader program. And so that's what we'll do first. And uh, if you're ready to create your first machine code program, then you can follow along with me and let's get started. Okay, so this is exciting. We're actually going to get to enter some code into our computer now, or in my case, the emulator, because I'm going to be using the ZX Spin emulator that we installed in our last video. So if you haven't uh, watched the last video, you uh, are free to go back and take a look at that, and it will show you how to install the ZX Spin emulator, which you can use for entering programs and running programs into your computer. And I've installed mine onto an old Windows laptop, so I know that it runs in a Windows environment and you don't need the latest hardware in order to run it. Or if you also have your own actual Sinclair Spectrum computer, you could also follow along with me using the actual hardware if you like. So the first thing before we get started entering our machine code program is I think we should discuss a little bit about BASIC. Now, why do we need to learn about BASIC if we're going to be entering a pure machine code program? Well, as I mentioned before, the computer only understands machine code when it's actually running a program. So no matter what type of program it tries to run, whether it's a basic program or an assembly language program or any other programming language, the computer only can understand machine code. So that means, for example, in the case of a basic program, it would need to be interpreted into machine code as it runs, which the computer does automatically. In the case of an assembly language program, we would need to manually assemble that program into machine code before the computer can understand it. And then the computer would be able to run the actual machine code program, which is generated after we assemble the assembly language program. So in this case, when I'm using the emulator, or if you're using an actual Sinclair Spectrum computer, the computer has a built-in basic interpreter, which means that when you turn on the computer, it's ready for us to start typing a program in basic. It doesn't have a built-in uh, assembler. That would be something that you would need to install separately. And although our ZX Spin package that we installed last time does contain a Z80 assembler, we're not going to be using the assembler for this exercise because we want to learn about pure machine code. So we're going to be using the computer or emulator just the way it is as if we first turned it on without installing any sort of assembler. Now what we need to do is somehow get our machine code program into memory because when we run a machine code program, the way we run it is by executing it directly from the memory within the computer. And in order to get that program into the computer's memory, we have to use BASIC in order to do that. So first let's discuss about peek and poke, which are the commands in BASIC that allow us to both examine the current information that's in a memory location, as well as enter new values into memory locations. So I'm going to start typing now in my emulator here. And for example, if I want to examine the contents of one particular location in memory, let's say location 50,000. And if you remember from our previous video where we discussed bits and bytes and um, computer architecture, and if you understood all the information in those videos, we discussed briefly how typically an 8-bit computer would have 16 address lines, which would allow it to access roughly 65,000 memory locations. So we're not going to be examining the memory map of the Sinclair Spectrum computers in this video, but we're going to just pretend that we're using an actual 8-bit computer that has up to roughly 65,000 memory locations. And we're going to pick a memory location that we know doesn't have anything else already loaded into it that the computer needs. In other words, we're going to choose a location in memory that doesn't already contain any vital information. So it's okay for us to write new values into those memory locations. So first, why don't we examine what data is currently inside memory location 50,000. And in order to examine the contents of a memory location in BASIC, we use the peak command. So I'm going to type in print, which is the P key, and then I need peak, which is above the O key. So in order to get that, I need to press Control shift on my emulator keyboard to bring me into the extended mode, and then press the O key, which brings up the word peak. And then I'm going to type the number 50,000 because that's the memory location that I'm interested in seeing the contents of. So if I enter this command, it'll show me the contents of memory location 50,000, which as you can see right now, contain the value of zero. Now memory location 50,000 is not empty. It contains a value and that value is zero. So zero 
is a valid value for data in a memory location. So just remember that and don't get confused and think that the memory location is actually empty because it contains the value of zero. Now let's see how we can enter a new value into that memory location. So in order to enter a new value, we use the poke command. So I'm going to enter poke by pressing the O key and then the memory location, which is 50,000 and then a comma followed by the value of the data that I want to enter into that memory location. Now, if you remember from our previous video where we discussed about 8-bit computer architecture, we know that each memory location can store a decimal value ranging from 0 to 255 because each memory location can store one byte of data. And one byte, as we now know, contains 8 bits, which have a value ranging from decimal 0 through decimal 255. Let's say I try to poke a memory location, for example, with a value outside of that range. Let's say I try to poke 50,000 with a data value of 256, which is higher than the maximum value of one byte. This should give me an error. So let's see what happens. Yep, an integer out of range error message comes up, which confirms that a memory location can only contain a maximum value of 255, which is the highest value in decimal that a single byte can contain. So let's try that again. I'm going to press O here and get my poke command back on the screen. And then I'll enter my memory location again of 50,000 comma. And then let's put in a value of 255, which we know should work because that's the maximum value that a single byte can contain. And now if I press enter, we don't see anything happening on the screen other than the confirmation message of OK at the bottom there, which means it accepted our command and memory location 50,000 should now contain a value of 255. So let's confirm that by taking a look at the contents of memory location 50,000, doing the same thing we did originally by entering print peak 50,000. And there we have our value of 255 that we just entered. So now we understand that the peak command allows us to examine the contents of a memory location, and the poke command allows us to modify the contents of a memory location by entering a new value into that location. Now, although this is a video where we're going to be looking at entering machine code programs, we're going to need to know a bit of basic in order to do that. And although I'm sure many of you, if not perhaps all of you, might already be familiar with basic, I'm just going to go through it for those of you who may not be familiar with it, and just so we don't miss anything. So here we actually don't have any program saved in memory in our computer. If I press the K key, which brings up the list keyword, and I press enter, nothing shows up. It's just the previous display that is still on the screen because I have no program listing in memory at the moment because I didn't enter any line numbers when I entered those commands. So if I press the V key, which brings up the CLS keyword, which is short for clear screen, then I'll press enter to clear the screen. If I press list again, I can see that there's no program listing. So now instead of having to type those commands over and over again manually, let's make our life a little easier by entering some line numbers and actually creating a basic program that we can modify and uh, use it as we like. So let's create a program here by entering a line number, line number 10, and let's say print peak 50,000. And that's exactly what we entered before without the line number, so we know what that does that's going to print the contents of memory location 50,000. And if we want to try that, we could run this program right now and see what happens. So let's press the R key for run and enter. And 255 that we entered previously is still in memory location 50,000. Now I'll press enter again to bring up our listing. And now let's try something a bit different. We'll enter line 20 and we'll use the input command. And again, this isn't intended to be an in-depth tutorial on basic. But BASIC is useful for us on our programming journey, so let's use it for what we need it to do. And in this case, I want to use the input command, which is on the I key, so I'll press I for input. And input allows me to capture a value entered by the user on the keyboard when the program is running. So I'm going to also enter a prompt here that will be printed on the screen before the data is entered by the user. So to do that, I'm going to press Control p to bring up my quotation mark because remember I'm using an emulator, so I need to press the correct keys to bring up these symbols. And I'm going to print a message here so the user who's running this program knows what information it's expecting. So I'm going to put enter data 
value. And then I'll put a space and then another quotation mark. And then I'm going to, at the end here, I'm going to put a semicolon. Whoops, not an O. Uh, semicolon. And then I'm going to enter a variable name that can be used to store the data that the user is going to enter. So let's use a variable name, let's say X. And we press enter. So then line 20 is going to allow the user to enter a number and it's going to store that number in a variable that we have designated as X. So next we want to take the number that the user entered and store it into memory location 50,000. So let's enter line 30, poke 50,000. And then we want the value that the user entered, which is now in the variable X. So we'll enter X and enter. And so line 30 will now take the value that's in X that the user entered in the keyboard from line 20, and it's going to poke or store that value into memory location 50,000. So let's run this program just as it is and see what happens. So it's showing us the current value in memory location 50,000 is 255, and it's asking us for a new value. And we know that value needs to be between 0 and 255. So let's pick a random value of, let's say, 57, and we'll press Enter. So now, if we look back at our program listing, the value of 57 that we just entered should now be stored in the variable x, and then line 30 of our program stored that value into memory location 50,000, so memory location 50,000 should now contain the value that we entered, which was 57. So let's check that manually by just entering print peak, 50,000 and now we should expect it to be the value that we entered which is 57 and it is so let's go back to our program listing and modify our program a bit just to make it a bit more elaborate just for the fun of it so let's re-enter line 10 here as 10 print and now I'm going to put a string which a string is just a line of text and I'm going to put memory 50,000 contains, and then a space, and then a quote, and then I'm going to put a semicolon here to keep the print position at the same location directly after this line that is going to be printed, and I'm going to put peak 50,000. So this does the same thing as before, but now it just gives you a prompt that says memory 50,000 contains, and then it gives you the value of memory location 50,000, and we can run this and check that to confirm that it works exactly the same as before, but now it gives us a nice little message there. Memory 50,000 contains 57. It's asking us for a new value. And let's give it a value of, let's say, 100. 100. Then we enter that. And now if we run it again immediately, we see that memory 50,000 contains the value of 100. And we can just keep running this over and over again, entering new values. And we can see that the memory values change every time we enter a new value. And there it is. So now we understand how peak and poke works. Peak lets us take a look at the contents of a memory location, and poke lets us enter a new value into a memory location.